about you know uh, spiritual marriages and you know physical marriages and so on and so forth. I don't I don't have absolutely my testimony of Joseph Smith. My what I feel for him has nothing to do with uh, to what extent he practiced polygamy, but it was an interesting situation in which there are literally thousands of people descending of these individuals that are wondering based on what has been written whether or not they are descendants of Joseph Smith. And so here you have a chance to tell these people how things are. Okay. Another story with Mosiah Hancock, journal entry uh, that uh, Clarissa, uh, Clarissa Reed uh, um, went to Joseph Smith, told her that our Mosiah is dying. You know, this our Mosiah could be our meaning me and my husband, Levi, or our meaning as me and you, Joseph, you know. The, the family rumor was that this was Joseph. Uh, uh, talked with other uh, historians, and, uh, including Keith Perkins, uh, that was a, a religious professor at BYU, and he was a descendant of Mosiah Hancock and confirmed this rumor. So there were several descendants that were convinced of that. So I say, okay, same story. Let's find some descendants. It's like, wait, you don't need to. Okay, like, okay. There is, we have a descendant of Mosiah Hancock, just one guy. He paid a commercial company to get his DNA done and framed. Like, okay, so <laughs> guess some people like to put their degrees on the wall, and some people put their <laughs> DNA. You know. <laughs> so it's like, well, that saved me some time and some money. Would you send me a copy of that certificate? We start with that. Only 12 markers. Paternal line. Only 12 markers. Only one descends. And say, ah, we might not have enough to know. You know, I can share 12 markers with many of you and not be related. You know, because there's just so few that we're comparing. It's called identical by state versus identical by descent. You know, coincidentally, we just match a few markers. So I say, okay, let's run these markers through the database. I know I have several Hancock in my, in my database because I was actually looking for John Hancock paternity, who Fawn Brody talks about as potential child of Joseph Smith. So there are actually two brothers, John and Mosiah, that are eligible candidates. And unfortunately, I don't have any answer for John yet. Uh, still looking for descendants of him, so if you know of any di direct paternal descendants of John Hancock, please let me know. But in this case, we have uh, uh, seven matches in the whole database that match these 12 markers, not the serial mutation. These are all Hancock except this individual right here. This could be an individual that is related to the Hancock family and there's been a, a surname change, or that just matches his DNA by chance to the rest of the Hancock. But the fact that I have one, two, three, four, five, and six individuals who are Hancocks, and the most recent common ancestor of this individual predate uh, Mosiah that match this, then I can be pretty sure that what I have in my hand is a Hancock, pretty good Hancock profile. And then com comparing just the 12 markers I have uh, with the Joseph Smith, you know, I took all the other ones out because, of course, you know, I don't have them for, for these individuals to compare. Then uh, find a lot of differences between the two of them. So the fact that they matched the Hancock, not the Smith. Again, Mosiah was a Hancock and not a Smith. And this is going to be published this year in the John Wilmer Historical Association Journal, I think, in this, this fall. So now we have four of these, uh, five of these individuals crossed out from this list. Of course, there's a list that continues to grow, but you know, one by one, we might we may get through most of them. Now, there's going to be some cases we're probably never going to be able to solve. Uh, particularly, children that die in infancy do not have, uh, do not grow up to adulthood, have children of their own, and so we don't have a living posterity. I'm not really in the business of going around and dig up graves and testing um, babies' bones. You know, I think there is a limit to <laughs> what is right to do or not, but. The other thing is that since these are people that die 150 years old, there are a lot of situations in which how can you be sure that the bones that you find are actually the person that you think it is. And so you, you start creating a lot of if situation that uh, uh, I, I just don't like to deal with. Okay, so going back to the first question, the original question was, uh, can, can we tell now after almost 10 years something about Joseph Smith's paternal ancestry based on his DNA. Okay, and so some of the things, so this is the, the 43 markers that you saw in a few of the, of the slides. Question is where in England, if in England, it came from. And the, the 
the speculation is that since the man, his name was John Whittingham, that took this Robert Smith with him to Boston, Massachusetts, Robert was 12 years old, this John Whittingham had property back in Curtin, Lincolnshire, England. Therefore, the assumption has been made that Robert Smith was also from Curtin, Lincolnshire, England. And that if you go to the Family Search website and you look for the Joseph Smith uh, pedigree, you find Curtin, Lincolnshire, England, although there is no strong genealogical evidence with the, with the exception of the fact that the man he came with was from the area, okay, but it wasn't related to him. And so, first I started looking closely at England. Okay, let's see if he's really from, from Curtin. Let's see if we can say something. And uh, I ran, um, and we see a couple snapshots uh, uh, in, in a minute, but I ran these markers through our database, and uh, I could not find any uh, matches with Smith in England in our database. The only people that I could find that they shared this, uh, this uh, signature, um, they are Smith, were individuals who shared Joseph Smith Jr. grandfather, Ezo Smith, as the common ancestor. So because I went to t all these uh, reunions, now I have a bunch of Smiths that are related to each other, and so they all come up when I do a query of this database. They are in the database. This will make sense more. I see a lot of you with big question marks on your head. But it will make sense in a min more sense in a minute. The other thing is that there is a large study, independent from, uh, from what I'm doing, at uh, this website, where they're trying to study all the different lineages of Smith. As you know, Smith is a surname that uh, people took over based on the, um, on the trade that they were doing. So everyone that was a blacksmith, a locksmith, a goldsmith, they all became Smith. 1% of uh, um, surname in the United States and 1% in the UK are Smith most common surname. Also, in 1600, the most common first name was Robert. <laughs> you know, you're looking at a very common individual. It's like truly a needle in a haystack. And, uh, and this, uh, in this, uh, on this website, they have data, extensive data, for 272 Smith, genealogical data and, uh, and uh, genetic data, of people that are trying to find out how the different Smiths are related to each other. All these Smiths that came to northeastern uh, United States, so we're talking about Massachusetts and Pennsylvania, even Ohio, you know, in this area. Can we differentiate one line from the other? And I ran this, um, this uh, uh, profile there, and I found only one match with, out of all the 272, and the one match was from an individual born in Vermont in 1800, last name Smith. Okay, John Smith was born in Vermont in 1805. I asked our genealogists if they could find a link between the two. There is nothing about this guy. We don't even know where he came from outside of the United States. There is a, a little brick wall. Maybe Craig Foster here uh, later can help me uh, looking for some, uh, for some uh, uh, if we can extend the genealogy to this individual, I'd be happy to give the name to you. Uh, I think it was a Sheldon Samuel Smith or something like that, but we'll, uh, um, it's not important. But anyway, very rare, okay, very rare. It doesn't even match the Smith. Not only uh, I couldn't find anything in the database, I cannot even find anything in, with other Smiths from the same area. Then I look on the Y pages of Curtin, Lincolnshire, find there are 1,100 households that are Smith, wrote to each one of them. True story. <laughs> I sent 1,100 letters to Curtin. I also had a friend living in England. I asked her to buy me 1,100 stamps from UK to United States so that she could send it to me so that I could put a, a self-address stamp envelope in it so I didn't even have to pay for the response, okay? Kind of make things easy. And uh, I got only 33 people to send me their DNA. Of course, you know, <laughs> you get this letter from this guy with a swab, you know, like, what do you do? But 33 people sent me their DNA from Curtin. These are all Smith. Zero matches. No one was similar to that. So I'm kind of like, okay, you know, there is, you know, not very much there uh, with regard of, a, of an English connection. So let's look at the DNA now. Let's think outside the box. Where could this DNA be found if it's not in the area of England? So this is a program, this is the website right here, where you can enter actually all the numbers from the previous profile right here, and uh, it essentially looks for these commonalities I was telling you to get before, and put people into the same family or clade or group. 
is, a, is called an haplogroup predictor. Now, it predicts, so it's not accurate 100%. It gives like its best guess. There is like a percentage of confidence 